Welcome back. Our next topic on application of the derivative is what we call linear approximation. What linear approximation is, is kind of a formalizing way of writing the equation of the line tangent to the graph at a particular point. That's what all this particular thing means here, is that we're going to take this f of x, we're going to approximate what f of x using what we call l of x, which is linear approximation. It's our original y value, which is read as f of x sub 0, or f of x naught, plus the derivative at that x naught times the change in the x value, or the delta x value, for x is near x naught. Now, if the further x gets away from the original value, the worse this approximation is going to be. If you go what you already know, back when we did uh, writing equations of line tangents of the graph, we had y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1, where x1 and y1 are the points that the, the uh, graph goes through. In my linear approximation way, what I've done is I've taken y1 over and put it over here, and I've written it as y equals y1 plus my slope times x minus x1. Notationally, this y1, we're writing as f of x sub 0, the original value, plus the derivative at x sub 0, or x naught, and that's my slope and then <clears throat> that's times the change in the x value. So essentially what you're doing is you're just writing the equation of that line tangent to the graph, and then after you write the equation of the line tangent to the graph, um, you're going to use that line to approximate values that are very close to x sub 0. Let's take a look at an example of this. My first function is um, y equals f of x which equals the square root of 3 plus x. What this is going to do is we're going to use, we're going to find the linear approximation with x, x sub 0 equal to 6. That's going to be a convenient value because when I put in 6 here, I'm going to get the square root of 9, which is 3. So the first thing I need to do is I need to find that point on the graph. So f of 6 equals 3. I then need to uh, find the derivative, little chain rule here. It's going to be 1 half times 3 plus x to the negative 1 half uh, times 1, which we would normally see as 1 over 2 times the square root of 3 plus x. And then if I write the, if I find the f prime of, of 6, which is my convenient value, my value close, it's going to be 1 over 2 times the square root of 9, or 1 sixth. So then my linear approximation, the L of x that we were talking about a minute ago, for values that are close to 6, close to 6, is going to be 3 plus 1 6 times x minus 6. It's x minus 6 because that's the convenient value. The, the point is 6, 3 that we're writing it close to. Now, if I'm going to use that in my second part to estimate what is the square root of 8 or 8.9 or 9.3, what, remember that what's going to happen here is that if I have the square root of 8, written the way that I have it, it's the square root of 3 plus 5, which is going to become f of 5, which I can approximate by writing L of 5. L of 5 would be 3 plus 1 sixth times 5 minus 6, um, which I got to be approximately 2.83 repeating. If you take a look at what the square root of 8 is on your calculator, notice that it's 2.828. So I'm pretty darn close to, to two decimal places. Run it off to two decimal places. I'm pretty darn close. If I want to do the square root of 8.9, similar. Square root of 3 plus 5.9. F of 5.9 approximately L of 5.9, or 3 plus 1 sixth times 5.9 minus 1, minus 6, sorry. And when I did that, I got approximately 2.983. And again, very close. And notice that 5.9 is going to be closer to 6, and so therefore this estimate should be a little bit closer than this estimate. And we're going to talk about how far those are away a little bit later on in this unit. And then finally, the same idea with the square root of 9.3. Square root of 
square root of 3 plus 6.3, which is f of 6.3, which is approximately L of 6.3. Or 3 plus 1 6 times 6.3 minus 6. And I got that to be about 3.05. So we're going to be using these linear approximations to approximate things that are close to convenient values, close to values that you already know, like the square root of 9, or this, you know, or the square root of 4, or the sine of pi over 3, which is my next example. In my second example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use my linear approximation to approximate what is the sine of 61 pi over 180. 61 pi over 180 is a close to 60 pi over 180, which would be pi over 3. So I'm going to use x sub 0 of pi over 3. If I find my f of x sub 0, or f of pi over 3, the sine is my parent function, so the sine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. When I take the derivative, f prime of x, that's going to be the cosine of x, f prime of pi over 3 is going to be the cosine of pi over 3, which is 1 half. So then my linear approximation of this close to pi over 3, which this is very close to pi over 3, l of x is going to be the initial value which is the square root of 3 over 2, plus the derivative, 1 half, times x minus pi over 3. In this example, my angle here is now 61 pi over 3. So L of 61 pi over 3, excuse me, 61 pi over 180. is square root of 3 over 2 plus 1 half times 61 pi over 180 minus, now I'm going to write pi over 3 as 60 pi over 180. This right here in the parentheses is going to be pi over 180. So it's going to be the square root of 3 over 2 plus um, 1 half of pi over 180 is pi over 360. Let's work that out and see how close we are. Make sure your calculator is in radian mode. So first of all, let's evaluate what is the sine of 61, oops, 61 pi divided by 180. What you can see is that's about 0.8746. And if I take the square root of 3, divided by 2 plus pi over 360 oopsie let's try that again that should be divided by 360 I get 0 0.8 8.747 so I'm darn close to three decimal places I'm right so it's a very, very close approximation. You're going to see that a little bit later on when we talk about concavity. We'll talk about concave up and concave down, and then we'll know whether these are underestimates or overestimates. And um, these lead to multiple problems about this and some things that you'll find on the free response questions on the AP exam where they'll ask you to use linear approximation to approximate a value. And then after you use that linear approximation to discuss whether it's an overestimate, underestimate, and why it is. So best of luck on this assignment. Answer any questions you may have in class.